Okay, hi everyone. So today we're going to be talking about how to get a um, Java program to connect to an Arduino board and send a countdown to it, a series of numbers. Okay, so basically what we're talking about is we're talking about your computer, like that, right? And it's running a Java program on it. And it's got a USB line that connects to an Arduino. And that Arduino so that's USB, so you get an Arduino or a Grove board or some mi microcontroller that has a serial port on it. And uh, and so what you want to do is you want to send it a countdown, 10, 9, 8, whatever. And so basically what you're going to be doing is sending bytes of information, okay, so a certain size of a little packet to, um, to the Arduino over and over again, okay. Now on the Arduino board, you've got a little... C++ program running because you can't run Java on an Arduino um, but that's using the Arduino IDE. So you've got your Java system over here okay and you've got your C++ running on your Arduino over there. Let's focus on the Java part. Alright so on the Java part of things we are going to break up the program into two files. We're gonna have one file that contains a, a handler or a, a process for doing something and we're going to call it countdown handler dot java okay and inside of countdown handler dot java there's going to be a class okay there we go over here so we're going to have a class and this class is going to be uh, the same thing it's going to be countdown handler like that. All right. So we're going to start that up. Just kind of a little block right there. Okay. Now, inside of actually, hold on. Let's draw that a little bit shorter. Okay. There. And uh, and so we're going to have inside of here, we're going to have some private variables. Now, these variables are going to be uh, local and usable only by the handler itself. It won't be used on the outside. So we got some private variables. Okay, and so we're going to have one of these is going to be a byte. We're going to call it n, and then we're going to have uh, another one called output stream. Okay, and uh, actually that's the type right there. And then we're going to have a variable called output stream like this, with a lowercase o. Okay, and then we're going to have so the the type is with a capital letter, so type timer, and we're going to say timer like that. If that's confusing to you, you could uh, also call it like a my output stream and my timer. That would be another way of doing this. All right, so these are the three private variables, okay? These are going to be used internal to the object that we're going to be creating from this class. Now, inside of a, a a class like this, we want to have something called a constructor, which effectively initializes the um, the object that will be instantiated or created from this object. Okay, from the plan. So the the class is a, a plan. Okay, and the object is its implementation. All right. So we're gonna have a constructor, and the constructor is kind of they, kind of, they look, look a little weird, okay? But basically what they are is an example, the way you write it, it's like an example of how it would be, uh, how the, the class would be called, okay? But inside of it, you're going to have um, this dot n, this dot timer, and this dot output stream. Now, notice that on the right-hand side of these periods, right there, you have the three private variables, okay? And this is a keyword that basically says we're using it in the context of this method, or sorry, this object, this class, okay? That's that's what we're basically talking about. We're, we're saying that it's internal, okay? It's being used within the context of this particular object, okay? Now, 
the values that are coming in for this constructor are coming in from the outside. Okay, we're going to be passing parameters into the object that will be created from this countdown handler class. And so we're going to pass in a byte. Okay, and um, and so this uh, this is going to be a um, we're going to pass in the duration. which is going to be basically the number of times we're going to um, run, okay? Or the number of times we're going to count down. That's basically what that is going to be. And that is going to get fed into N. But this is coming in from the outside when we call the object, okay? Um, and then from there we're going to have, uh, let's see, we're going to have a timer. object that will be passed in like that and then we're going to have a stream object as well okay so an output stream called it output stream and we're going to be passing this in from the outside as well okay and then the constructor will basically say okay well these are the three things that I need from the outside world I'm going to assign them to the internal copies that's what's going to happen here, and then we're going to work on these internal copies within the object. Okay, so that's what the constructor. So the constructor will get called at the sort of initialization phase of the uh, of the object. Now, inside of this object, oops, this, we have a method. Okay, and th this is basically the program that's running inside of the object the actions that are being run. So this method, we're going to call it, um, actually, this this method right here is going to be the run method. Now, why is it run? Well, what I forgot to say is that the countdown handler right here is going to be an extension of a different type of of class, okay? So we've got, we're creating a class ca called Countdown Handler, but it is based on an existing class. And that, um, that, that, uh, that, ex that existing class is based on timer task, okay? And it's coming in from Java util. Okay, so we're bringing this in and we're going to be extending it. So we're extending it. So we're kind of redefining how it's going to be used in this particular context. Okay, so we're bringing in timer task. We're going to use it as the, the basis for countdown handler. Okay, and its definition within the Java Utils library um, is that it has an internal method called run. This run method gets run on a, on, on a, in our case, on a schedule. Okay, so we're going to modify basically run. We're going to show how it's supposed to be used. And this is how we're going to do it. So we've got a method inside of this particular class that will run. Okay, and, um, and so inside of it, there's going to be basically two choices. The first one is going to be based on whether or not there's an exception. So we're going to say, basically, if there is an exception, so yes, there is an exception, then we're going to exit. We have to exit a particular way. If there is no exception, and exceptions are generally bad, okay? So what we're trying to do here is say that if something goes wrong, do this, and if it doesn't go wrong, then do the thing you were intending to do in the first place. Okay, so we're going to try. So, so basically, in this case, there is no exception. So we're going to try to do the following. Okay, so this is inside of our, our run method. So inside of here, we're going to take a look at the value of n. Okay, so if we pass in a value of, say, 5 into this run method, 
what we're going to do is we're going to count down from five. We're going to go five, four, three, two, one, zero. And so the first thing we have to do, and then each time we do that, we're going to do something. All right. So we're going to say is n greater than zero. So this is another decision diamond. Okay. So then we have right here. Okay, is it greater than zero? Um, false and true. Okay, so if it is, then we are going to send uh, over USB, okay, using the data stream. We're going to use, which is um, this right here, output stream, which is going to connect over, U over the serial um, object we'll talk about in a second. It will use it, that data stream, over the serial to send something to the Arduino. So we're going to send over the USB line, we're going to send N. Okay, whatever that value is, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, and then from there, we're going to uh, subtract 1 from N. Okay, now I'll get back to this in a second. If we get to zero, okay, then we want to send a signal to the Arduino that we're done. So we're going to send negative one to it. All right. And then from there, we're going to the cancel the timer because we're done. Okay. Now, What this means is that this is the method that we're running. Okay, this method comes in, it takes a look to see if anything's wrong. If nothing's wrong, then what we do is we try to send information out to the USB line using this sort of decision tree right here. Okay, we're basically going to say um, if n is greater than zero, then send the value of n over the USB line and remove one from N and then start again the next time the timer gets called. Okay. And if we're done, then we say send negative one as a signal that we're done to the Arduino and then the Arduino will do its thing. And then at our end on the Java side of things, we're going to cancel the timer. Okay. And so that is effectively what's going on inside of this object that will be called from the Java from the uh, countdown handler class. Okay, that's what's going on. So we initialize it using the uh, the constructor, and then we run this method inside of the object that we're going to be creating from countdown handler, which itself is an extension from timer task. Okay, which is built into the libraries for Java. All right, now we have another file called main dot Java. All right. Now inside of main dot Java, we're going to do, uh, we're going to have a class called main. All right. And we've seen this class before. And so what we've got is two files. We've got countdown handler dot Java that has its own class in it. And then we have main dot Java that that's got its own class called main. And then inside of it, we're going to set basically a constant, okay? And uh, and this is going to be timer duration, okay? And and we're going to set this to some value. We could set it to five, we could set it to ten, we could set it to a hundred. This is going to be the start of the countdown that we're going to send into the Arduino. Now, after that, we're going to have a main method, and that gets set up the way we always set up our main methods. Okay. Now, there's a list of things that we're going to do inside of our main method. First, we're going to create a serial port object. Now, this is based on the uh, J Serial com 
library from Facecast. So this, this is going to be a, a block of code that will run that will allow us to connect into the, the, the serial port, the, uh, the USB object. Now, what's important to point out here is that you've got your laptop. And your laptop has this USB line right here. Inside of your laptop, you've got your operating system. This is going to be Mac OS or Windows 10. Okay, inside of that, you've got the Java vir virtual machine. Inside of the virtual machine, you've got your program. Inside of your program, you're going to have the serial port business from serial, the J serial com. This is responsible for connecting the rest of your program out into the virtual machine, out into the operating system, and then into the USB line. That it's this little block, really important block, it's well um, sort of set up block that allows that connection from what you have done out into the virtual machine, out into the operating system, then out into the actual hardware, and then out into the Arduino. So we need to create a serial port object. That's that's in this, the software from JSerial.com. Next, we need to set the parameters for serial communication. And these are things like setting it to be 9600 baud, etc. Okay, those parameters need to be set up. Then we have to open the serial port. Now the the serial port gets opened or tries to open it, but it's going to have to verify that it is not already open to another program. So if you've got a hyper term or real term or cool term set up, or if you're using the serial monitor uh, utility in the Arduino IDE, that that resource will already be locked up, and so it will fail. Okay, to open. So otherwise, we have to throw an exception. Okay, so we have to check to see if that resource is already being used. Next, we have to create a data stream. That basically is the communication route um, between your pro the rest of your program and the serial port object. Okay, this is the information that's going to be sent through or from your program into the serial port. Okay, so we have to create a data stream. Next, we're going to add a hook. Okay, and this is going to uh, be connected to something called a thread. In your computer, things are running more or less in parallel, okay? So you've got one program running like this, and another run running like that, and another, and so they're, they're sort of running along like this. This is time right here. And they're sort of running in parallel to one another. This might be your web browser. This could be um, um, Google Docs running in another web browser. And this right here is your Java program right here, okay? That is running that line you can think of as a what's referred to as a thread. Okay, so we have to add a hook to this thread. And so what that's going to do is it's going to make sure that when it comes time to shutting things down, we have to do it cleanly. And so we need to make sure that we uh, close the data stream. And we close the connection to the serial port. And we do this because the Java virtual machine is interacting with all sorts of other things that are going on in the operating system. And so we have to be play nice with these other things that are going on in the OS. So we've got, we have to make sure that this thread knows how to close itself. Okay. Next, we have to create a timer object, okay, of type timer. And then we're going to create, and that's from Java Utils, okay? And we're going to create a 
countdown. Object. Where does that come from? That comes from the countdown handler. What was the countdown handler? It was this thing that we created over here. Okay, so that's going to go into the other file. It's going to go into the other file. It's going to pull the class out of that file and it'll create an instance of that class as an object that's being used inside of main. And then from there, eight, we're going to run a schedule on the timer. Okay, now the timer is going to be passed into the countdown handler. Okay, and then we're going to run a schedule on the timer itself. And we're going to run the timer the number of times that we've, uh, let me see, set 5, 10, 15 times. Okay, and we're going to run it at intervals of 1000 milliseconds. And that is your main class. Okay. So we're going to create a countdown handler object from the countdown handler class. It itself is an extension okay, of an existing library that's related to timers. Then we're going to, um, let me see, then we're going to do all of this where we're going to basically connect the serial port. We're going to create a data stream. We're going to make sure it can shut down nicely on the thread. We're going to have a timer object. We're going to have a countdown object and we're going to schedule the whole thing. That in a very big nutshell is what we're going to be doing in order to be able to communicate with the Arduino board.